Welcome to Destination BC's Supernatural British Columbia brand webinar. My name is Mary Elliott, and I am the Senior Brand Manager at Destination BC. In this webinar, I will be telling you about our brand platform, as well as the brand toolbox, including photography style, typography, color palette, tone of voice, and logo web tile. And the best place to start is on the definition of brand. A brand is the personality of business that sets it apart from its competitors. Without clearly establishing a distinctive personality, Evian would just be plain old water. Our brand is what makes us distinctive, memorable, and different from other destinations in the eyes of the potential visitor. It promises a unique kind of travel experience and guides expectations of what travelers will see and do, and importantly, how they will feel. We learned from extensive consumer research that for travelers to BC, nature is the magnet. Nature has a transformative effect on travelers, whether that be restorative, resetting perspective, or even spiritual. In our research, travelers spoke about why authentic nature matters to them. Their feelings and experiences were highly personal, but for each one, those feelings were heartfelt. And BC doesn't just have nature. BC has wilderness. It's huge, abundant, diverse, accessible, and authentic. With the diversity of BC and its people, we're many things. But if we really look carefully at who we are and what we stand for, through the lens of travelers, there are a handful of attributes that represent our natural resources, wilderness, and culture all at once. BC is strong. It is a strength born out of the power of our nature and its deep impact on everyone it touches. It is reflected through an unwavering confidence that speaks to being grounded and tuned into what's real and true. BC is free-spirited. It is non-conformist, authentic, and true to itself. It carries an attitude that is not limited by the done thing, but carves its own path, welcoming others to come along for the journey. BC is, after all, the left coast. BC is adventurous. With its vast, accessible wilderness and breadth of experiences, BC is not afraid to be challenged and must be experienced, not witnessed, to be fully appreciated. When engaged in, BC is a place that will reward and change you. BC is open. BC embraces people with an open mind and an open heart. While it demands a level of respect, it is non-judgmental and accepting. It not only welcomes you to be yourself, it surrounds you in an environment that inspires you. BC is generous. This speaks to the warmth of BC's people, but also a land that is vast, diverse, and abundant. When nurtured and respected, it has so much to offer, from an abundance of wildlife to rich vegetation to an ability to put one's life back into perspective. At the core of our brand is the brand essence, wild at heart. The brand essence speaks to a truth about our target audience. They have a deep appreciation of nature, and while they may lead successful and accomplished lives, there is a part within them that craves a connection to the wild. In the wild, they are reminded of what is real and what really matters, and the true nature of beauty and freedom. But while our unique selling proposition is BC's nature and wilderness, our province has so much more to offer, such as urban and cultural experiences. This is why, within our strategic brand essence, Wild at Heart, there is a sense of both refined civilization and raw wilderness. This dichotomy is also captured in our creative. A blend of the cultured and the wild, of sophistication and exhilaration, of urban and natural landscapes. Our creative can be summed up in two words, cultured and raw. Cultured raw is the lens that directs our creative. And now to our photography style. The most visible and obvious way of expressing the brand is through photography. And with our new photography style, our mandate is to reset the bar and assume the enviable position of being recognized at a glance for our unique and compelling imagery. Our goal is to be different and to stand out from our competitors. With our imagery, we want to stop people in their tracks and really capture their attention. 
We're looking for authenticity in how we represent the brand. And that means looking for depth and drama, often highlighting the beauty and texture created by our skies and climates. This means finding shots that capture the reader's attention, whether they be flipping through a magazine or surfing websites or sifting through endless emails in their inbox. For our brand, the best criteria we use to judge image selection is against this question. Does this look like a tourism photo? If the answer is yes, we don't use it. Mood-filled photography is loved by the masses. People are less impressed by picture postcard photos. They're looking for moments of life captured in an instant, unearthing unposed and effortless beauty. But it's important to clarify that this doesn't mean dark and sullen. The term mood may be more meaningful to us as we refer to an effect that gives the photograph a soul, a dreamlike quality that can be achieved in sunlight conditions as well as overcast skies, in wilderness settings or urban, with landscape, still life, or people as the main subjects. In essence, like the experience of traveling through our province, the bar for on-brand photography has a very personal and intimate perspective. Three tiers of photography represent the types of images needed to tell the story to the consumer. There's no hard line differentiating each tier, but rather a continuum. All are brand images engaging and inspiring the travel from an emotional perspective. Signature images are meant to create the first impression and ignite the desire to visit BC. These are the most awe-inspiring and highest on emotional impact. Often, people are absent or only present to provide a sense of scale. This level provides an inspiring visual introduction to the most emotive aspects of our nature. These images go beyond visual information to create emotionally driven viewer involvement. They are more dramatic and awe-inspiring. The experience here is where we start to provide context to stimulate a deeper interest and understanding of specific places and experiences we're representing. Experience begins to add more visual information while continuing to reinforce the emotional equity of the brand. This tier includes subjects or activities that narrow the focus, but retain a highly brand sensitive look and feel. Experience level photos should work as hard as signature shots to capture spontaneity and visual depth. These images need to create an emotional hook that is both motivating and compelling. The Moments tier illustrates individual elements that make up the mosaic of places and experiences we're presenting. Using a casual editorial style, we can add the individual pieces that add the details and provide texture, smells, or flavors to our story. Combined with signature and experience images, they complete the story. Remember, all three tiers are helpful in telling the story, and all three tiers should fulfill on the emotional equity of the brand. All photography, regardless of tier, should reflect the characteristics of our brand. There are a number of techniques that we've identified as part of our photography style. The next few slides will review these techniques and show examples of how they create a look and feel that we can be known for. Dappled light can create drama, even in sun-drenched scenes such as this one. It works like this. Imagine a room that is fully lit with fluorescent bulbs. The room is bright but flat. Compare that to a room which uses well-placed pot lights that create a pattern of focused spotlight. Fully lit shots can come across as flat, while dappled light produces depth, texture, and mood. Using imagery based on monochromatic tones can yield strongly compelling effects. Images that are predominantly made up of one part of the color spectrum take on an illuminated and soothing presence because of the reduced visual noise. You can see that the simplicity of these images draws the viewer in, and the story of the content emerges because there is less clutter. Shots created with a shallow depth of field provide dimension and a tangible sense of being there. When you throw the foreground and or background out of focus, it reflects the way the human eye sees the subject and can bring a stronger focus on it. Gently veiling the subject through airborne particles such as snow, mist, or dust can bring dimension and a bit of mystery to the photo. 
As with dappled lighting, it's best if the veiling doesn't blanket the entire shot, which can flatten it. Backlighting adds to our unorthodox brand styling with its nostalgic glow. The bright spot of light provides warmth and often obscures the subject, creating anonymity, mystery, and romance to the story. Be careful to avoid creating pure black silhouettes with harsh backlighting. Strive for more subtle color and detail. Cropping into a photo can provide an interesting obscuring effect similar to light and shadow play and mist cover. Don't be afraid to experiment with breaking traditional rules like cutting into faces or more deeply into the frame. The photojournalistic quality prevents this shot from feeling cliched, avoiding the standard of people always looking overjoyed, big smiles on their faces, which isn't always credible. This natural quality is more relatable and engaging. In fact, faces away from the camera keeps the subject anonymous, allowing the viewer to imagine themselves there. Color is one of the most powerful cues for identification. In photography, we want to establish a look that is immediately recognizable, and color can be a great way to do that. For starters, we look for rich earth tones. Primary red may be better as oxblood red. Bright sky blue can be calmed to a dusty aqua blue. Acid greens can be toned back to mossy earth tone greens. In general, we dial back superficial primary colors and dial up velvety earth tones. In fact, great impact can come from photos that have a simple marriage of warm and cool. When the right balance is found, the visual information is simplified, taking on the beauty of a monochromatic photo with the added dimension of color. In some cases, softening the edges between the subject and foreground, light and shadow, and cool and warm colors increases the artistic value of the photo. With natural gradations and blended hues, the viewer can be pulled into the emotion we want to portray. Using these toned down hues as our imagery color palette can help guide imagery selection. But remember that every image needs to be judged individually on a range of criteria to determine how on brand it is and that color alone cannot ensure this. Regardless of subject matter, try to weave wilderness or natural surroundings into the photo. This is particularly relevant in showing our cityscapes. Try to find drama in a composition, and always to tell the brand story of urban centers in relation to their natural surroundings. Remember, nature is our magnet. We've assembled mood boards by region to showcase how the photography techniques, including color palette, help to define a distinctive, unified, highly compelling style, regardless of geography or climate. Please take a closer look at these mood boards in our brand guidelines found on our destinationbc.ca website. These next few slides show photographic techniques to avoid. Interestingly, most of these images are ones we've used in the past, and while they're great photos, they illustrate how our new style differs from our old one. On this slide, we call Happy Overload, we see people in the shots looking artificially happy. We also see oversaturation of color that takes away from the authenticity of the images. On this cliché slide, we see people in four situations of fun and happiness all have a clichéd, unauthentic feel to them. This third slide shows how overuse of color tinting, photoshopping, and color desaturation create a sense of artificiality. I think you'll agree that techniques such as long exposures, artificial lighting, fisheye lenses, all take away from the authenticity that is our foundational pillar of our brand. To help illustrate the impact of these new photography techniques, we've put together a few more slides that compare old brand style with new. On the left, you see the benefit of tight cropping and capitalizing on monochromatic tones to create more drama. The middle pair compares photos taken at different times of day and the impact of dappled light to produce the pronounced light and shadow versus the brighter, flatter light. Also notice that the bottom image has parallel, uniform horizon lines that appear static and predictable. And the third set compares the effects of dramatic weather and texture versus a more typical, flatter light. 
With the images on the left, the top image works because of the overcast skies muting the colors and the natural earth tones, the mist creating layers of progressive receding landscapes, and the hikers are natural, not posed, whereas the image on the bottom is bright, overlit, and the hikers look posed. Overall, far less dramatic and appealing to the eye. With the center pair, the image on the top has mist muting the background without eliminating it, which puts more focus on the foreground while low light enhances shadows in midground. The bottom image is brighter, but with everything crystal clear, we're left with a stark, emotionless image. The pair on the right contrasts a photojournalistic moment versus a very posed, picture-perfect moment. Also look at the color differences, the desaturation with natural suede smoothness versus the higher color and patchy shadows which take away from the mood of the shot. The image on the top left shows intense, minimal skimming light that highlights but doesn't eliminate detail, while the image on the bottom, with its exaggerated sunset colors, feels unnatural and saccharine sweet. The center images provide the contrast of using light and shadow and a shallow depth of field, not to mention the interesting active angle of the biker to pull in the reader. The images on the right are great examples of staged versus candid and natural poses by the subjects. They allow the drama of the setting to be showcased, per the image on the top, or recede, as with the image on the bottom. So, to summarize, remember that our goal is to reset the bar and define a photography style that separates us from our competition. Our objective is to improve all levels of our photography. We do this by using light, shadow, color, and moderate obscuring to make images more provocative, by weaving in nature, and by uniting all photos with techniques that heighten drama, emotional impact, and real-life credibility and authenticity. Remember these techniques, monochromatic color, photojournalistic style, dappled light, desaturated earth tones, gentle obscuring, whether that be backlight, veiling, or cropping, texture and grain, shallow depth of field, unusual framing, deprioritizing faces, and maintaining natural human emotions. Now let's move into our typography. We have two categories of font. Our primary, which is our own great forest font, and our secondary font, which is brand and grotesque. Great Forest is a font created for a new brand. With a rough, wood-carved look, it stands out from the off-the-shelf mechanical fonts used by most of our competitors. The character is perfectly suited to our brand essence, Wild at Heart, and fortifies our brand as immediately recognizable and memorable. Great Forest is a display typeface, meaning it is not meant for body copy or lists. The goal is all about establishing the personality. So, Great Forest is reserved for headlines and subheads. Overuse will erode its distinctive qualities. Branding Grotesque is our secondary font. It is available from many font suppliers, such as myfonts.com. Staying true to the cultured, raw duality, we have selected Branding Grotesque for its modern appeal and compatible counterbalance to Great Forest. Its function is to provide legibility for reading larger blocks of text but is also a beautiful alternative in its all-cap forms for subheads. Branding Grotesque has a full complement of weights ranging from thin to black. However, the preferred are light, regular, and bold weights. This helps to keep copy blocks clean and easy to read. The mix of our two typefaces delivers on the culture draw look and feel of our brand. Each one complements the other, painting a diverse yet balanced picture of BC through simple typography. Now moving on to color. Our color palette is made up of three tiers. The primary tier includes white, black, and red, colors used for our logo. In fact, our salmon red is only used for the red maple leaf. The secondary palette are the colors you reach for beyond black and white, yet still muted. The tertiary palette fills out the field with seven earth tones. We've narrowed down the color spectrum that the brand is seen in. This is intentional to help establish a recognizable pattern in the minds of our target audience. In addition to establishing familiarity, our brand is founded on a stripped-down simplicity 
that prioritizes a raw, understated presentation. The neutral tones of the color palette showcase our photography as the hero, especially important when the image is composed of earth or monochromatic tones. Next is our tone of voice. Strong brands, like strong people, are opinionated. They have a perspective that they bring to bear on things. Largely, it's a perspective that sets them apart. We are confident in expressing the BC Destination Brands perspective, which is this. Every journey taken with British Columbia is, in fact, two. An outer journey and an inner journey. The further we travel into the province, the deeper we travel into ourselves. The more we are touched by BC's powerful nature, the more we discover our own nature, our authentic selves. This inner and outer discovery reinforces our primal belonging to the natural world. It is an experience of coming home, of returning to ancient truths, of rediscovering that we are all wild at heart. Our core traveler prospects view themselves as explorers, not vacationers. They're not looking for escape. They're looking for stories of discovery. These discoveries might be about the geography, the culture, or the history of BC, but often the greatest discoveries are the ones travelers make about themselves. They expect to be moved, transformed, or challenged in some way. These brand and traveler insights shape what we say and how we present information. Our insight-driven writing brings deeper perspective and meaning. Messages become more resonant because they are rooted in human truth. The balance between inspiration and information will vary depending on the objective of the content. It's important to have a clear purpose when we write. If the purpose is to build brand awareness and get BC or your region, community, or experience on the radar, copy should be more inspirational and insight-driven. However, as travelers move through the purchase cycle, their need for more functional information grows. Thus, content will focus on assisting in trip planning or building urgency, so more on utility and less on inspiration. Regardless of the balance between inspiration and information, the style, how we write, remains consistent. We avoid typical tourism copy. As with photography guidelines, if the writing sounds like marketing, it needs to change. We use a poetic style to build emotion, vibrancy, and immediacy. This also gives the brand a distinctive voice. For us, poetic writing simply means painting a picture concisely with words. Find more memorable and pleasing turns of phrase. We avoid flowery language, indulgent descriptions, or words plucked from a thesaurus. The fewer words we use to paint a vivid picture, the better. Writing should be elegant and concise, confident in its simplicity. Avoid redundancy. In our writing, we seek not to advertise, but to share. The reader should sense a warm, welcoming strength, not a bombastic ego. We speak the truth, not hyperbole. We do not need to overtly sell. Our province speaks for itself. Avoid overused tourism sell language like these expressions. They've lost their meaning that they once had. Instead, remember that every word is there for a reason. And in summary, when developing copy, here are some questions to ask and challenge yourself. Does the writing inspire you? Regardless of where the traveler is in their purchase cycle, the writing should excite and inspire them to take the next step. Does it meet the traveler's needs? Think about where they are in the purchase cycle, inspiration, consideration, planning, or booking, and think about the channel. A billboard will sound very different from a digital banner ad than a website or a blog. Does it sound like typical tourism copy? Does it contain cliches, overused words or phrases? If so, change it. Scrutinize every word. Remember, even the very best writers will use editors to help refine and polish their work. Don't be shy about asking a colleague or friend for their advice to help make your writing the very best it can be. The last tool in our brand toolbox is the Super Natural British Columbia website tile. This tile is available to members of BC's tourism ministry, including sector associations, communities, DMOs, and individual tourism businesses to use on websites to promote BC as a tourism destination. To download, register or sign in at imagebank.destinationbc.com.
www.supernaturalbritishcolumbia.net. This concludes our webinar on the Supernatural British Columbia brand. Thank you for joining me. If you have any questions or would like more information about our brand tools, please email marketingcommunications at destinationbc.ca. And be sure to check out other resources and tools to help your consortium, sector, or tourism business align with a new brand. You can also find examples of our brand brought to life through Destination BC's marketing, as well as regional, sector, and community consortium activities. Remember, building a unified brand is important because we are stronger together.